All right, so I have some cutting to do on the boat, and uh, I'm going to put in a depth sounder, and I want it as far forward as possible. And I already talked to Bill at Precision about you know where I could possibly put it in the bow, and he recommended uh, well right there. And so I'm going to install an inspection port, and then I'm hoping to um, basically affix the transducer to the inside of the hull. And it's all fiberglass; there's no uh, core material. So it's all solid fiberglass, it should shoot right through. So unlike some other um, projects you may have done, you know, say around the house, um, creating your, marking your hole um, is a little different with this because you can't just trace the inside of the, uh, the bracket because this lip has to go inside the hole. So the hole has to be bigger than this lip. Um, but, of course, the nice thing is that the lid basically is the size of the hole so I use the lid to mark my spot okay so I made a uh, pilot hole with a uh, this one inch drill bit and then I'm gonna use that to get my jigsaw in there and just checking how much space I have yeah it looks like I got a good maybe three and a half inches um, so plenty of plenty of space to mount a transducer. So I got my hole done, and let's see how much clearance there is. So I got three and a half inches of clearance between the liner and the hull. Uh, so that's plenty of room for the transducer. So the next thing is the moment of truth. See if the uh, if the ring fits in there, the trim ring. And hey, perfect. I love it. All right, so that's perfect. Nice and tight, actually. And uh, so yeah, there we go. I got a nice little. <laughs> hole in my bow. Okay, so this is the uh, the piece that I drilled out of the boat to create my new inspection port. And I gotta say, um, I'm pretty impressed. It's it's nearly a half an inch thick. I mean, that's, that's pretty good for just the floor of the cabin. So yeah, I'm definitely impressed with the uh, manufacturing of my Precision 18. All right, so the next question is, where do we put the display? And the obvious answer is right here. But on this particular boat, there's a couple reasons why I'm not going to do that. Um, one is the thickness of this unit. So uh, on the other side of this is a piece of teak. Um, and it only gives about an inch um, between the fiberglass and the teak inside the cabin, the teak trim. And so that would mean that I would have the back end of this and the wires um, stick it into, into the cabin space. Uh, and I, I just don't like the way that's going to look. So the second reason is the design of this cockpit. Um, so the angle here, and you can see I'm kind of leaned back a little bit, the angle is designed with ergonomics in mind. Um, and so it's designed so that you can sit here comfortably on either side of the cockpit, um, you know, kind of lean back in a very comfortable, relaxed position. Uh, and if there's a display right here behind my shoulder, um, then that's going to kind of ruin it a little bit. So I don't want to mess with the ergonomics that were designed into the boat. So that's the other reason um, that I'm not going to install it in this kind of typical location. So in the end, what I've come up with is a pretty non-standard solution, but I think one that's going to work best for me. So what I'm planning on doing is mounting it at the forward end of the cockpit right here. Um, and so, you know, a couple concerns of that one is the display is uh, glass, but luckily there is a cover for it. Um, and I'm going to mount it high enough that I think feet or shoes, you know, hitting the front of the cockpit, um, it'll be above, hopefully above that area. Um, so that's the plan. The advantage here is uh, one that I can see it from both sides of the cockpit. Um, the angle of it uh, is going to reduce any glare. 
Um, the wiring of it, because the control panel is, is right here uh, on the starboard side, um, is going to be very easy. Um, plus, I'll be able to run the wires between this fiberglass and the teak, uh, and then under the headliner to the control panel. And then the other thing is that there's plenty of room. So the, uh, the cooler lid comes up, but there's still plenty of room here, um, plenty of clearance. Um, and then just the looks of it. So from inside the cabin, um, it won't be quite as unsightly as having it up here. Um, so that's, uh, that's my plan. Now I just got to drill a hole. Alright, so on my uh, display for my Hawkeye depth tracks, um, I've just put a thin bead of uh, 4200 uh, around the bezel. And I'm going to go ahead and mount this. Okay, so here's the back side of the installation, and the plan is to bring it up behind the teak, um, poke it into the headliner right here in this corner, bring it inside uh, to the back side of the power panel. And uh, you can see there's a little bit of plywood in here, um, but I don't think I'll have any trouble getting it through the headliner. Alright, so I got the wire poked through the uh, headliner just behind that teak trim, and now I can just pull this up and then I'm going to put some little clips back here to hold this and uh, start wiring it up. Okay, so this is the power panel. Um, this is the auxiliary switch right here at the bottom, which is the one I'm going to use. So the middle terminal is where the power goes and then on the outside is a whole ground bus. And you can see what they did is they just twisted the end of this bus and then used one of these clips. Um, and attach that there. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to bend this a little bit um, and then connect it the same way. Now the reason I'm bending it is so that it doesn't catch um, on this opening when I insert it because obviously with one of these connectors sticking out uh, it would take up too much room. Alright, so there we go, all wired up, and I'm just going to tuck these back in here.
Now to hold this power cable up uh, behind the teak trim, I'm going to use D-line cable tidy clips. Um, and they're something I found on Amazon and um, I like them a lot. They're, so this is what they look like. They have adhesive on the back already. Um, and they're very flexible. Um, they don't have any sharp edges. They're very low profile. Um, and so I like these a lot and I use them in a couple other places around the boat as well. Um, so I'm going to use these both to hold up this power line and then also along the top of the uh, quarter berth to hold the, uh, the cable from the transducer. Um, so that'll be held up along the inside of the quarter berth by these tidy clips. Okay, so first we'll switch on the cabin light. So that still works. Uh, so all these are good. And then switch this on. Ah! All right, so it definitely works. All right, so we can see here the display is uh, lit up and getting power. Um, obviously no display because we're in the garage and not in the water. But uh, yeah, that works. I dig it. All right, so next is running the cable for the transducer. And the Hawkeye Depth Tracks comes with a lot of cable. Um, so since it comes with a bunch of cable, I'm going to try and avoid uh, drilling any new holes in my boat for the cable to pass through. Um, so I'm going to use this uh, copper wire. I'm going to string it on the starboard side uh, between the liner and the hull. And the hull is sealed to the liner right here. Um, but below that, this is basically, for the most part, an open space. Um, so um, I'm going to run it all the way back to the inspection port at the bilge, um, which is underneath the cooler. And then I'm also going to run it beyond that to the drain um, that comes in uh, under the cockpit. And so the drain is actually going to be the exit for the cable. Um, and then once it's out, I'm going to bring it back forward about four, four and a half feet um, to where the depth tracks display is going to be installed. Um, so that's the plan right now. We'll see. I think this is probably going to take multiple attempts, um, but we'll see how it goes. If you're wondering how I ran these cables, um, so the tools I used were uh, about 12 feet of copper cable, a 30 inch, two and a half foot uh, dowel with a little bit of uh, duct tape at the end, an inspection mirror, and a lantern. So the way I did this, I ran from the inspection port I installed in the bow to here. Um, and I did that by stringing the copper cable down under the bunks. Um, and I had a problem because it kept coiling up. So it would go about maybe two and a half, three feet in, and then just start coiling up in a big empty space that's underneath the bunks uh, between the hull and the liner. So, uh, you know, I kept straightening the cable, straightening the cable, trying to get, you know, any of the coil out of it and try to try and try to try it again. Um, and so eventually I got it to where it was maybe um, about three feet from the opening here at the inspection port. Uh, and so I put my lantern inside the hull, um, was using the mirror to see where the end of the cable was. The cable has a little bend in it. Um, and so I ended up sticking this whole dowel in here, um, making the turn and putting my arm in here. And then basically with the mirror, um, finding that little hook at the end and snagging it with that piece of duct tape. So that took me three hours. Um, so not an easy thing to do, um, but that's how I did it. Um, and then I used that cable to run the transducer cable. So then I pulled this cable out again, um, and there's a small um, drain in the stern. And so I taped the end of this cable to the dowel, and then I pushed the dowel through the drain. So from, uh, from the stern toward the front of the boat, toward the bow. Um, and then once I got my flashlight, I could see it down there in the bilge. Um, and I just grabbed it. Um, and so then the cable was attached. So the cable was attached to the end of that dowel. Um, and so that's how we're, where we're at now. So this cable sticks out of the drain in the stern um, and comes to here. And so again, the plan is um, because I don't want to make 
any more holes than I need to in the boat, um, the exit of the transducer cable from the bilge is going to be that stern drain. Um, now the reason I'm not doing that right now and the cable sitting here is because to test the transducer um, I've got to be able to throw it over the side and check the depth and then put it in my mounting point and check the depth and make sure the readings are the same. And so if I run that this cable all the way to that drain and then back forward to right here, to right here, um, I won't have enough cable to throw it out the forward hatch and dunk it in the water. So I'm going to have to wait until the boat gets back on the water before I can do that. So here's my mounting location for the transducer. And uh, what I've done is I've taken a jar of Mott's applesauce and I've cut it so that it's contoured to the shape of the hull. And that is going to go right there and it's nice and flat. Uh, and so then what I'm going to do is I'm going to be able to seal that to the, to the hull and then fill it with water. And so I'll drop the transducer into the water and then it'll be sitting there flat against the hull, submerged in water. Alright, no job in a boat would be complete without some sanding, so time for some more sanding. Now for a wipe down with some acetone. Alright, so I put a little notch here for the cable to exit. And uh, now I'm just going to put it down with some 4200. All right, so I've got a nice bead of 4200 on there. And I marked the notch is going to go forward. So... pretty good. Alright, so now I just need to wait for that to cure. Okay, so for securing this down I'm going to use 5200 3M sealant um, because this inspection port should never need to be rebedded, right? It should be a permanent part of the boat. Um, so when you mount these, um, if you care about the way it looks, I focus on um, the little finger holds here and so I either go with a horizontal or a vertical orientation and so in this case I'm going with the horizontal and you'll notice that the mounting holes don't quite match up with the orientation of the finger holes so um, yeah make sure you put your lid in and put it real tight and then determine where you're going to mount it and what the orientation is going to be to mount this one I'm using uh, just stainless screws um, and so in areas where I might be working in the future, um, you know, sticking my hands in there and, you know, moving some tools around or trying to install or uninstall something, um, I don't like to use screws because you end up scratching up your hands. Um, but in this area, um, there's really not a lot of room in here. What I'm mounting is directly below it. And, you know, it's not like I'm going to be reaching underneath here to do anything um, other than maybe running a new wire at some point. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and use these screws. Um, for something where, you know, I might be doing a lot of work inside, um, on the back side of this inspection port, I would use uh, machine screws, stainless machine screws. So when I'm drilling mounting holes in fiberglass, um, instead of marking the holes, uh, you know, with like a Sharpie or something, I actually like using uh, the mounting surface as the template um, because a lot of times, um, at least with my drill bits, when you put them down on the fiberglass because it's very slippery, um, sometimes they start moving around. Um, and so using this hard plastic as the template keeps that from happening. Alright, so surface prep. Uh, for the 3M sealant, as always, is with S-Tone. All 
All right, so here's what my little jar looks like um, now that it's mounted and uh, there's sealant. So uh, the next step is going to be to fill it up with water and see if it leaks at all. Uh, leave it for a couple days and see if there's any leaks or see if it's watertight. So here's the finished inspection port with the transponder inside it and now all that's left is to test. Alright so I'm drifting right now and my current readings are anywhere from 39 to 43 feet. So, Alright so here's my little jar of water. I've got the depth finder out the hatch and over the side. So there's a dip sounder over the side, coming out the hatch. Alright, so now I've got it over the side and you can see the readings. Yeah, they're about the same. I got 44.9. 